Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're working on a couple of projects around the Hartley, really in preparation for all the big equipment that's about ready to come into this yard to help level the area around the greenhouse so that we can start putting in our new garden. I'm super excited for it, quite a bit left to do yet. So I say we're gonna work on a couple of projects, but this is really our main focus for the day and I'm really not sure how intense this is gonna be. So this is the pondless waterfall that Greg Whitstock came with his designer, Brian, and they installed it two seasons ago absolutely gorgeous beautiful sound it looks so natural definitely looks better you know when there's stuff around it that's alive looking a little bit rough right now and even though i was here when they were installing it i really wanted to take it apart stone by stone just to kind of refamiliarize myself with how like well how it comes apart so that maybe when we get ready to install it again I'll have a better idea of how to put it back together. We've got the tractor with a pallet. We've only got a couple of pallets here. I'm not sure. I might have to run down to the garden center and grab a couple more but I'm just going to start in by removing plants, uh, removing smaller rocks, driftwood and then I'll probably have to grab Paul or Aaron or both of them to help me with some of the bigger rocks. And if this process goes faster than I think it's going to I would like to transplant some perennials from the same kind of area. So pond is there. There. I've got over here well these penicetum I want to transplant these these are awesome I don't know what variety they are I, <laughs> I say they're awesome but they really are when they're grown so I'd like to keep those and then we've got some ladies mantle right over here that I'd like to clean up and transplant and then over in this section I would like to remove all the irises I love irises and then we've also got some hardy geraniums that I moved over here last year from the front yard. They did beautifully. So if we can keep those going, that would be great. And I also have some coral charm peonies right here that I just recently planted. There's three of them. That one looks a little smaller, but I'd like those to be moved. I definitely won't get all of that done. Maybe not even any of the perennial moving done. I think we just need to get started on this pond project. So here we go. <laughs> So here's where we're at. Rocks and driftwood have been removed. I'm super thankful for the light, cool breeze that is blowing in the air this morning because, oh my word, <laughs> moving rocks is not for the faint of heart. It's heavy. But we have the kind of the inner workings of this waterfall exposed. So you can see the reservoir, just the tip of it right here. It's like a four by four square, most of which is covered by a thin layer of gravel. So that'll be easy to kind of unearth. But you can see this big, long piece of tubing right here. It attaches to a kind of I don't know what the piece is called, but it attaches to this right up at the top. So there's a pump in the reservoir, which you can see the cord for it, that pumps water through this tube up to the top. And then the water goes through that and then comes back down through here. Um, so these right here, these levels are just soil underneath. It was just dug out to be kind of like this perfect little waterfall. And this is the only area where there's actual water and it's going to be really gross and stinky when we get in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is kind of a top-down shot. I initially thought I would work from top to bottom and kind of just lift the liner up and spill the gravel into the next layer and so on and so forth. But this pond liner doesn't extend the full length down here. So I think it might be a little bit more of a mess if I try to do it that way and harder to get the reservoir out. So I think what I should do, I'm gonna detach this, lay it to the side, and then I'm going to try to lift the liner up and kind of um, put whatever I can up onto this layer and just clear this as much as I can so that we can get the reservoir out. And then we can, this is such a small amount of gravel, we can just dump it down into the bottom of the hole. I think that's how I'm going to approach it, but you never know until you really get into a project how it's going to go. So let's just get into it.
Okay, so here we are. I've got the upper level of liner just kind of full of gravel right there. And then you can see more of the reservoir down here. And you can see what we've got going on inside. Gross. Uh, so we've got to get the water out in order to get the whole reservoir out because it'd be way too heavy. So I'm going to plug in the pump and if this works, water should come out the top. Oh, I hear it. Oh, it is working. Oh, hooray. We're gonna create a little bit of a mess, I think. Maybe we'll let some of it drain out. Oh, it stinks. Oh, that's just like the worst smell ever. I'm gonna let some of it drain out. I'm gonna turn it off. We'll let it soak into the ground and then I'll turn it on again and so on and so forth until this reservoir is pretty much clear of water. Good quality pump though. That pump has been sitting in this water since last spring, not on at any point. And then it went through the whole winter and it still works, so that's great. Okay, got the lid exposed. So now there's still a little bit of water in here because I couldn't run it completely dry because that's bad for the pump. There's just a couple of inches down there. So I wanna get the lid off and then I'll try to scoop out some water and then hopefully we can lift the whole reservoir right up out of its location. Okay guys, all done. Oh my goodness. I really want to get a good shot of what the contouring of the land looks like around it because I'm going to want to repeat the same process or very similar to this same process when we get it installed again. So you can see the reservoir was in here. That's the little layer of gravel that was on top of the reservoir and on the upper levels. And then um, there were stones stacked right in here. And then there's this second level right here. And you can kind of see how there were rocks, you know, kind of nested in um, on top of the pond liner. And then there's the third level right up top. And then this is where the water came out. And then the tube went round and connected to the corner of the reservoir. So other than the rocks in the pond liner, this is what creates the waterfall. There's the reservoir, the pump is inside, it's attached right here. I had to cut the tubing because that's all glued around the PVC. Um, and then there's this box here that the tube connects to, but that's, that's it. It's pretty amazing. And there's the liner and some tree suckers that I cut out while I was waiting for Aaron to come back with a pallet. Oh, and there's the baby girl. Hi. Hi. Does it stink over here? Yeah, it does stink over here. So I did have to dig out a few plants because they were right in the way. There are three Carex, and then there's a small pile of ajuga here and one ajuga sitting there. The, there's a foxglove and some snowdrops that are still buried. And then there's hookara, Japanese maple. I'm going to be moving the Japanese maple. But the rest of this, I actually have friends coming today to pick those up. Oh, I've got to tell you, it's so nice, like a weight lifted to have this dismantled. Because while I knew it needed to move, as well as the butterfly garden, the pallet fence that we built, and a bunch of other plants, I knew that Chad was going to need to drive right through this area where the reservoir was, and that reservoir wouldn't have held up to heavy equipment. Um, so I really just wanted to get this done. And even if it's going to sit on pallets for the season, I mean let's face it you know life happens and sometimes you don't get to some of the projects you want but it'll be ready for when we are in a place where we can get it installed again so yeah you can see the edge of the hartley there this is where the edge of the um reservoir was and he's going to need to drive right through here uh to get around and i didn't want him to have to like stay so close to the hartley 
<laughs> so anyway, he'll come through here and he'll fill in this whole area and level it because that's what he's going to be doing anyway, is just kind of helping us with the grade, leveling this whole area out so he can fill in the rest. I'm not going to even worry about smoothing any of this out. It's really not worth my time. It would take me half a day and it'll take him with equipment like 10 minutes. Okay guys, so that actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. Intense work, but pretty quick. It took about an hour. So I'm going to go have some lunch and then I'm going to tackle just a little bit of plant moving before I need to go do all my regular garden chores and watering and such. Okay, I'm all refueled and ready to go. I'm going to start with the Japanese maple, digging that up that's closest to the pond. So this one right here, it's got a really neat weeping habit, bright green leaves that are kind of feathery texture. Um, if I can find the name of it, I will put it on the screen, but there's a ton of life in this tree and I really want to save it. Japanese maples in our area typically can't take full sun. They can have a little bit of morning sun, but need to be protected in the afternoon because they usually burn pretty badly. This one did okay last year. I never got around to transplanting it after we had the trees removed. Some of you may remember that when I initially planted that, it was under the canopy of some pines and juniper, which when you were walking around beneath the canopies of those trees, it seemed like this magical, lush woodland. Like It seemed like it didn't almost fit in with the rest of our garden because the rest of our garden is so exposed and so hot and sunny. Uh, but if you looked up into the canopies of those trees, you would see pines full of blight and a juniper that was about half dead, um, which is really sad. But I was kind of like, it's a shame to lose shade any kind of shade that you have, but also I didn't want to keep trees that were diseased and that looked like that around. Um, anyway, we've been working on this property since the day we moved in, removing diseased and half dying trees. And I hope we're kind of on the end of that and moving on to replacing and putting things back together. Anyway, all that said, this maple stayed in this spot in the full sun all season and barely had any burn on its leaves. So the green ones can typically take a little bit more um, than some of the red maples in terms of sun, but putting it in a container will give me the flexibility to move it wherever I need to. This is the pot I think I'm going to plant it in. I'm not sure how big of a root ball it's going to be. It was really small when I planted it, so I don't know what to expect. You can see what was in there. Look at this. That, that's a mint plant right there. This mint was growing out the bottom and rooting in in other places, and it had been in this container for, I don't know, three years. So I decided it was time for this one to come out because it was starting to not perform as well last year. Let me show you the top. Yeah, what had happened is it stopped coming up in the center and it was only coming up around the outside. It was just so root bound it needed to come out. So we'll start over fresh with another mint in another pot. In the meantime, I'm hoping the maple fits in this. up I'm gonna keep it in the greenhouse for a while just so it can hopefully ease into its new location in life it didn't come out of the ground with a super huge root system I could still see kind of the original root ball but it had grown some pretty good sized lateral roots which of course have to be cut you know to dig it out they have to be cut at some point so anyway I thought if we just protect it at night keep it well watered in here uh, you know it doesn't get I mean it gets hot in here but not tremendously hot we've got the um, Sides rolled up, the front door's open, the back door should be open. I must not have propped it open good enough. But anyway, good airflow in here. So we'll just hope that this one survives. Looks real pretty right there. Okay, so here's what I think I'm going to attempt to move. The three Coral Charm peonies. There are some dark purple, and I can't remember what variety, but dark purple delphiniums in here. So there's one, two, three, four, five of those. And then there are some Nepeta the cat's pajamas and there are let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten a number of them in this area that i will dig i think these will be really pretty on the west side and they're showing strong signs of wanting to start growing and blooming i'm so excited for color so i'm just gonna dig them all up put them in the gator and we're gonna head them on over to the west side garden All right. 
right, so we've got our plants. We're over here at the West Side Garden. We have 10 Nepeta, five Delphinium, and then two of the Coral Charm Peonies. So we just gotta get these in the ground, get them watered in. And this is gonna be such a fun process. And I've already kind of mentioned that I can kind of just go to town with fun flowering things because our winter structure is so strong already over here. I don't really have to worry about evergreens and things. So we did the uh, Royal Jubilee Roses here recently and then the little baby Kim Lilac. I've got white ones for Veronica here, so I'm just gonna start in and start planting some of these things. I need some fertilizer. I knew I was missing something. all planted you can hardly see them at the moment I'm excited to watch them fill in though but you can see the baby Kim lilac that we just recently planted there's the coral charm one of them one of the peonies is there um, that one came out with a really nice big root ball the other one is so 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 I tucked it in at the other end down there I'll show you in a second uh, but we do have room to do something else back in here and I will put something taller vertical right here and then this is an instant karma elderberry which We've got three in this flower bed, but this one we have to keep cut down because they get so big so fast. You can see it's already starting to push its leaves. So this one we won't have blooms on, which I don't mind. It's got beautiful variegated leaves. And then again, we've got the white wands of Veronica. There's actually white echinacea in here too. So 10 Nepeta is what we ended up with. That's going to be a beautiful bank of summer purple color. So we'll have our purple lilac in the spring and then summer color. We've got room right here, we don't have time to do it today, but I think I'm gonna do a drift of that penicetum grass because it's kind of a mid height. So we'll have a nice fluffy, colorful perennial, the grassy texture, and then Royal Jubilee will come up above it as well as the five purple delphiniums. That will be a nice vertical tall interest right there. Okay, let's head down to the other peony. The best part about this whole project is you feel like you're shopping your own garden. I mean, these things have to be moved for the project we're gonna be working on anyway. You may as well, if, as long as you have time to do it, move as many things as you can. Okay, so this is also an instant karma elderberry right here. You can see how big they get. My word, they get big and absolutely gorgeous. So this one will have discs of white blooms this spring. Uh, they bloom on old wood, so uh, we have to leave it and not prune it until after it's done pruning, should we want to keep blooms every year. Anyway, right below it, we've got a Mary Rose, which will be our summer color. I kind of tucked the peony right, in, right behind the rose because the rose will look like this in the spring the peony can kind of fill in this area here and do its thing and bloom while this one's just, you know, starting to fill in and leaf out. But I'm not real sure how this one's going to do anyway because it didn't have as much of a root ball. It should be okay though if we keep it nice and moist. And that is going to do it for today's project. I'm really happy with what we got done today. I really thought, I was hoping we would get some transplanting done. I didn't think we would actually get any of it done. So the fact that we got 17 plants moved and the pond done is just awesome. And it's really nice. I actually stopped and I took a bunch of video and pictures with my phone, like close up of how that land was contoured and everything. So hopefully we can replicate pretty close how it looked before in another location. I think it would fit in really beautifully out in the South Garden. I think when you're walking around in there, it's got to have that natural feel anyway. And I think it'll fit and be a beautiful kind of unexpected surprise out there and that nice sound of water will be nice as well. As far as care on these transplanted things, I mean, it's always a risk to transplant your plants after they've been growing in a spot, uh, especially with ones that are more mature and more established, those are a little bit more risky. The later on you get into the season, the riskier it gets because the more stress, it'll just be more stress on the plant because it'll have much more leaf canopy to support. Um, so if you can do it earlier, the earlier the better, I think. Still risk either way. So I make sure to keep everything uh, watered really well. In fact, I went along and I watered all the roses we just recently transplanted. That was just a few days ago. And I check on things every single day. Um, in fact, the kids and I and Aaron, they, we come out every night and we just stroll through the gardens and I just look at things. Samantha Grace and I did a ton of watering last night. Um, it's just kind of a fun nightly ritual that we do. And of course, you'll get to see how these things do. You know, sometimes our transplants take and sometimes they don't. So you'll get to see through the season what actually ended up working out. I hope all of it does. Thank you guys so much for watching the video today. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.